Hello, welcome back to Hyrule Science. This is the third episode in a series where I'm going to explore every fusible item in Tears of the Kingdom, starting with the compendium. But first, let's read some comments. Mr. Everything commented that fire gliok heads can be one shot by ice or splash fruit, and frost gliocks by fire fruit. This is in fact true. Well, sort of. Using splash fruit on a fire gliok head increases your damage against it by around 50%, with ice fruit boosting it by about 100%. As for Frost Gleox, they take 100% more damage if using Fire Fruit. For the first tests, I used a Zonite Bow, which deals 30 damage uncharged, which made the damage using the fruits far more noticeable. For subsequent tests, I used the Old Wooden Bow, which deals 4 damage. As nice as it would be, you can't one-shot Gleox heads by using just the elements themselves. Nonetheless, thank you for leaving the comment, Mr. Everything. Pen was here commented that Splash Fruit can give you resistance to fire, and it does. Splashing yourself gives you fire protection for 20 seconds, which is 10 seconds less than being wet normally due to the heat evaporating the water. And this even works for tier 2 heat. With some of my testing, I've had it last upwards of 30 seconds. I'm not sure why, but it could be due to a bug or other mechanics running in the background I'm unaware of. Side note, wearing clothing versus being naked makes no difference. Which it would be cool if the water could reside in the cloth and make the fire resistance last longer, but oh well. Thanks for leaving a comment on this pen, I appreciate it. Mega the Vile commented that enemies will conduct electricity when using Splash Fruit on them. I used to think enemies couldn't get wet due to my Zora video, where I tested if the bonus from Zora weapons worked on enemies, but enemies can actually be wet. It does not last very long though. My estimate for how long an enemy can be wet is roughly 7 seconds, where upon wearing off they will no longer conduct electricity. Thanks for commenting this, Mega the Vile. I'm glad I was wrong in the Zora video. Squish commented that Splash Fruit works on Igneo Taluses, but they weren't sure how long it lasted, so I tested. Splash Fruit does douse the fire on Igneo Taluses, where they then have a random chance to reignite themselves with this move. So Splash Fruit technically lasts as long as Ice Fruit. Good to know, Squish. Thanks. By the way, if you douse one of the arms on an Igneo Talus, there will be an elemental area of effect when the rock hits the ground. Axel PVZ commented that Ice Fruit can create stone platforms on lava and you can conduct electricity on frozen enemies. The first part does indeed check out, and so does the second. Unfortunately, you cannot chain electricity this way, as other frozen enemies in the radius of electricity aren't affected by it. Thank you for letting me know nonetheless, Axel. Seabass commented and pointed out how cooking fire, ice, or shock fruit will give you unique moves when doing a power attack instead of boosting attack damage in the related weather, which was an oopsie on my part. I thought they just boosted attack damage like Mighty Bananas, which is kind of silly of me to think, looking back on it now. Here's what each different buff does. Each elemental upvick makes the radius of these power attacks bigger, and causes them to do more damage. Also, I just discovered as I'm editing this, that the final hit of a combo will trigger a different special move, which is pretty damn cool. But do be warned as both of these special moves drain durability even if you don't hit anything. Seabass, thank you for commenting and correcting my error. Starting from Hyrule Herbs, I'm going to breeze past a lot of the ones that don't do much outside of cooking. Hyrule Herbs give health, Stam Bulbs restore stamina, both radishes restore all hearts and give a boost to them, all Siflenotypes give resistance to their corresponding type, Swift Carrots give a speed bonus, Endura Carrots fully restore and give extra stamina, and Fortified Pumpkins give a defense bonus. As for Sun Pumpkins, they are one of the few unique cases of a material that's locked behind a quest. That quest being Homegrown and Hateno where you first need to unlock the quest's Read Secret and the Mayoral Election before it unlocks. Upon completing Homegrown and Hateno, you can buy Sun Pumpkins in the General Store. They give a much, much smaller bonus of Gloom healing compared to Sunday Lions, healing only a third of the Gloom when cooked by themselves. The upside is that eating the Sun Pumpkin meal will heal both Gloom and heal the previously Gloomed Heart in the process, which could save a bit of resources in some cases. Oh, and by the way, you can also feed an Endura Carrot to a horse to get a small temporary stamina bonus for it. Anywho, back to cooking. Swift Violets give a speed bonus, Mighty Thistle gives an attack bonus, Amaranth gives a defense bonus, Blue Nightshade gives a stealth bonus, and as mentioned earlier, Sunday Lions heal Gloom. Now, Bright Blooms 
are where things start to get interesting. I have a lot to say about bright blooms. Obviously, they provide light when planted, but there are a lot of ways to plant them. Fusing one to a weapon and jump attacking plants one, shield surfing plants one, using a bow plants one, even just dropping one and hitting it plants one. But one of the best uses has to be how attaching it to a Zanai vehicle will increase the distance at which it despawns. They're obviously really good for providing light in the depths, but be warned as baby froxes can eat them. Unfortunately, its cooking applications leave uh, something to be desired. Muddle buds are some of the most fun I've had in this game when I was introduced to them. Muddle buds will cause enemies to frenzy, attacking any ally nearby. I'd also like to report that it does not work on Yiga clan members. Surprisingly, you can even use it on battle taluses to make them watch their bacoblins. It even works on constructs for some reason, which is weird because they're pretty much robots. For bomb flowers, I think you already know what they do. They go boom. Fusing these to a multi-shot bow will wreak infinite havoc on enemies, and fusing one to a shield lets you get a huge vertical boost when shield jumping. Unfortunately, fusing one to a forest dweller weapon doesn't give you infinite explosions, when you might think otherwise. By the way, here's some extra facts about bomb flowers and their neighbors in the depths. Bomb flowers, muddle buds, and puff shrooms each have their own tree associated with them in the depths. Here's one for the bomb flowers. Muddle buds. And puff shrooms. So if you're on the lookout for any of these, keep a lookout for their trees. There's not a whole lot to say about Silent Princesses. They're pretty rare and give a stealth bonus when cooked. They're just as strong as Blue Nightshade, but unlike Blue Nightshade, they give some health when cooked. Corsair Bee Honey is pretty neat in this game. They can be used for a variety of recipes such as honey candy, glazed meat, honey and apple, etc. But these things go the extra mile when you attach them to a weapon, as when you attack, it spawns a horde of bees to attack enemies for you. Unfortunately, only one horde can be active at a time, and you can't spam them, but it's cool nonetheless. One more thing is that you can use puff shrooms to ward off bees when you go to grab honey. Or you can just use Ultra Hand to grab the honey. Who's gonna stop you? The bees? Korok fronds are this game's version of Korok leaves, as attaching one to a weapon allows you to blow gusts of wind. Not really much more to say other than you can eat them and even cook them for a teeny tiny health bonus. Hylian pinecones are unassuming at first, but actually have some really cool properties to them. Let me just, uh... Let me, let me just scroll to them real quick. Th this will just take a second. Hold on. And there. When thrown into a campfire, they make the fire much stronger, creating an updraft to let you paraglide up. When you attach a pinecone to a wooden weapon, then hit the fire, it will make the weapon visually have a stronger fire compared to a normal fire. This stronger fire doesn't even get doused when you're in the rain. So keep that in mind if you ever need to transport fire anywhere during rain. That's all from me for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new. If you're looking forward to more content like this, please subscribe. It's free, and you can always unsubscribe later. Also, here's the obligatory subscribe ratio. Again, if you have any facts about materials you'd like to share, comment them down below. Thanks again for watching, and have a good time zone.